Um, hold on just a second because I do have my the kids are about to go to bed. Yeah, do what you got to do. And um, right. now your wife's name is in the recording. <laughs> you're at you're we're cutting this part out, right? This is uh, totally, definitely, absolutely. Okay. Did you take the moonshine and put it in the sh the cabinet? Okay. Well, I just figured out the cold open. <laughs> that is exactly what's going at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> Hey, Internet! Welcome to another Star Trek The Next Generation commentary. We are Highway 47 Productions. We are minus one for tonight. At least one of our regulars is not here, but the core, the, the OGs are still here with us. Although, I mean, Scroderick's an OG too, if he wants to be. I don't know. We're not formal about these things. Anyway, I'm Shaggy B, and with me tonight is Draco Funk. Yep, I'm here. I've always been here. Always here. You're like a rock. You're like a funky dragon rock. Like the rock. Well, not like the rock. That's like the rock. I smell what you're cooking. Yeah. Yeah. And tonight we are watching Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1, Episode Number 6, uh, titled Lonely Among Us. I've seen, you know, all these episodes, and I don't really remember much about the plot of this one. Well, you know, it's a little hazy. Um, it it kind of it kind of flows into you, and um, eventually it'll just hit you like a bolt of lightning. I feel like I'm missing something there. You might be, but you're about to find out. So, um, you got a thing going on back there. What's it sound like? Uh, sounds like a vibra slap. Oh. I, I was I had a thing in front of me. I was playing with it. It wasn't a vibra slap though. Oh, okay. I do have a vibra slap, but it's like it's not here. Oh man, that should be a thing. Maybe season two will will open with a vibra slap every episode. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm stalling because I can't remember my question that I had for you. So I'm just going to make one up. Uh, do you like breaded alligator tail? I I I've never had breaded alligator tail, and you know I have to have like. It'd have to be like gluten-free breaded alligator tail. That's a good point. But okay, so just deep fried in general. Have you ever had it? I mean, I, I've never had alligator. Okay. Well, you know, uh, it's not bad. You can eat it like you can eat chicken nuggets. You know, it's just kind of a, it really does taste like chicken. It's like a white meat. It's good stuff. What's your favorite white meat? Um, I mean, I just had some pork chops. Does that count? I suppose it does. But they were pretty good. All right, cool. I mean, I like chicken, too. You like chicken? Well, yeah. maybe you'd like alligator if you tried it. And uh, those of you watching, post a message in the comments if you like alligator and tell us how you like to cook it, I guess. I don't know. Well, you know what? We're about to watch Star Trek. And the main reason we're doing this is we're separated by hundreds of miles, and we just you know, like to spend time with each other and watch Star Trek, even though we're far apart. That's kind of why we started doing this. We just... we, we you know, like to hang out and we can't just like you guys, whoever's listening, you know, you can hang out with us while we watch Star Trek. You can pretend that we're your best friends or maybe you are our best friends or maybe we're your are we maybe maybe you can talk and we can't. And maybe you want to talk with your best friends who are us. I mean, you know, if you're listening to this, you know, and not here with us, you won't be able to talk to us. I mean, you can. But, you know. And I mean, nobody's going to know. Say whatever you want, yeah. man. You know, if you're alone in your house on, on a Saturday night and you're just watching Star Trek by yourself, you know, it's a free country. Say whatever you want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're with all your friends or your parents or whoever, you know, I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. This is we are watching the Netflix version currently. It should sync up with the DVD version. I've I've tried that, too. And I think I tried the Hulu version on episode five and it. It mostly worked. And uh, just as an advisory, we might switch over. If the rumors are true about Netflix starting to show ads, 
then we'll be done with Netflix um, because obviously, screw that. But for now, we are watching the Netflix version, and we'll give you a five-second countdown. If you queue up your episode right at the very beginning, when we get to the end of the five-second countdown, you hit the play button, and you'll be right with us through the whole episode. Make sure you do not skip the intro, because we won't either. Yeah. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Five. Everybody at home, you re- Oh. Oh, okay. we're not ready. We're not ready. I, you said you were ready. I'm almost ready. Are you almost ready? I'm almost ready. Okay. Okay, we're ready to go in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. So this episode took place like in between episode two and three, according to the start date. Antikins and the Sele. Mm-hmm. Boy, Yara really fills out that dress uniform better than anybody else does. Is this the first time they use the dress uniforms? Yes, it is, in fact, yeah. Those are... Those are some lizard people. Yeah. I said last episode they were going to be fish people. I thought they were fish. I forgot. I was ready with catfish recipes, you know. Huh. Ooh, they speak with reverb. So they're going to they're going to see Parliament. Yep, I love Parliament. What's your favorite song by Parliament? Flashlight. Upwind on a starship. That th- is there an upwind? They never explain how their ventilation system works. I want to believe that last guy is like. I don't know what I was going to say, but like six hundred years old, <laughs> or the only decent actor. I see. Parliament's going to like be the ones to, you know, negotiate them into the Federation. Right. Kind of makes sense. Man, look how evolved they are. Yeah. I bet they still use archaic currency. Hey, it's an energy cloud. Wow. Never seen one of those before. Confirmed. Yeah. I see the thing, too. It's confirmed. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, nothing has ever gone warp speed before. So in all of Star Trek history, they've never encountered an energy field traveling at warp speed. Mm-mm, I never. really feel like that was the plot of like three original series episodes. I was thinking more like 15, 20. Where are they? Uh, sensor maintenance. I don't think they ever use that room ever again. <laughs> They're stationed there right now because, you know... It's convenient. Oh, hey, the shot from the credits. I can see that. Let's fly through it. I wonder if this room is on that um, the Starship Simulation. What's that called? Oh, uh, Stage 9? Yeah. Yeah, plug for that, um, stage9.co.uk, I think. It's a really cool Enterprise D simulator running, and I think I think they're doing it in Unity 4. <laughs> I love that look on Warp's face. <sighs> I mean, for being like a Klingon, he ends up like getting his butt kicked like a lot. Arr. 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 
It's a good plot device. If you're watching this on Netflix, you see that little skip intro button? Don't hit it. It's tempting. I want to hit it. Don't do it. Jupiter. Saturn. The unexplored reaches of next door. Where's Tim Forward? Didn't they film all of these upside down? Uh, most of them, yeah. Which is why you see a lot of shots at the bottom of the ship. Yeah. You know, I always, for a long time, I thought Jonathan Frank's name was Frank's. Like oh, yeah. R-A-N-K. I didn't know that Denise Crosby was related to Bing Crosby until recently. She's like his granddaughter or something. I, I didn't know that until just now. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people just found that out. Yeah, I hope I'm right. I'd better look that up. <laughs> <laughs> that's like back of my head sort of trivia that I picked up somewhere. Yes. Granddaughter of Bing Crosby, yeah. I feel like my dad once dated somebody who was like related to her. Wow, I never noticed that. Was the title always that low? Uh they put it in weird places in the first season. Get him, Jordy. You hold that cling on down. <laughs> That guy is still in the background, like, don't check on him or anything. <laughs> he's a nurse. It's okay. He can, he can like heal himself. Yeah, he's fine. Dude's like, yeah, just help him up. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. D don't check on me or anything. Just ignore <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, wait. she did check on him. She didn't wait for an answer. She just walked off. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Glow. That wouldn't explain Worf getting knocked the fuck out. I mean, it might. I mean, his visor malfunctioned and it knocked Worf out. Hey, it's like the cat people. These guys are like in the background of a whole bunch of episodes. They have huge brains. And bloody and delicious and squirming and... Yeah, I, yeah. This whole episode is just a big cat and lizard game. <laughs> Aliens are weird. <sighs> hey, where'd that scouter come from? Yeah, tell us his power level, Doc. This seems normal. Do, 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 not sensing anything weird. Do, do, do. Normal? Yes. Yes. I'm going to take this device off that I will never wear ever again. I feel perfectly human like all humans do. Did her boobs get smaller in this episode? Her shirt doesn't fit as well. I, I, you know, I, I was looking at something else, but now that's, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's the story the doctor will tell you as she leaves while you are still like trapped.
Warpe Ocho. Hey, it's that sweater again. Oh, yeah. I like the green one better. Yes, back. That's what I am. Just like all humans. Tell me about your human work. Dr. Channing, a human, right? Duh. Yeah. That's where I need to go. That is the hell. I mean, it wasn't in the first episode, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, and by season three, they just give up. You can control anything from everywhere. Hey, there's a train. It sure is. Yeah, you would know being another human. Well, nothing weird about her. Uh, doctor? I'll just ignore well, you. She knows best. She's the doctor. Not showing any facial expressions. So, basically, she blacked out and woke up on the bridge and she's like, I'm fine. And everybody just saw that and Oh, hey. It's an engineer. Engineer, sing. Is that racist? I don't know. I shouldn't assume every Indian last name is Singh. Don't feel bad. I thought it was Hispanic. To be fair, I did have an Indian friend whose last name was Singh. What are the chances of a galaxy class starship malfunctioning? Uh, given the number of times it happens, about one in 12. I wonder who's in the ready room. Oh, everybody. <laughs> That's the uh, observation lounge. That's what I meant. Oh my god. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> wow, our guy gets two episodes. What's Data doing? Mm, you know. Just chilling.
That's legitimately it. That's actually a lightsaber, yeah. It's the weapon of a Jedi. The tools of a Jedi. <laughs> I mean, you know, if it's a kitchen knife, you know, you could kill with a kitchen knife if you really wanted to. You could kill with a straw if you try hard enough. D did they actually do any violence? We will finish it, but we won't start it. That mouthpiece looks really awkward. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> Look at those red lights back there. Hey, the kids on the in engineering. <laughs> Best crew in the Starfleet. Oh, yellow alert. Huh. Adversary? Mm hmm. Yeah, that would never happen. Like, who, like, you know, nobody's going to go to engineering and pull out all the control chips or something stupid like that. Yeah. Maybe it's that T9, whatever it was, for Ingy thing, or. That the Ferengi stole. The T9 energy converter? Yeah. Yeah. They never recovered that, did they? Yeah. I mean, that could definitely be used for whatever it does. Converting energy. Right. Into broken computers. An energy cloud. Yeah. A computer breaking energy cloud. Or we could talk about literature. That's fine. History? Sherlock Holmes wasn't real. Shh, don't tell Data. I can't believe his name's actually Singh. His name is Singh. He's also wearing, like, a girdle. Again, I mean, why is the teenager in this, like, secured spot? He's an acting ensign now, remember? He's not in uniform. Just don't show any emotion on your face. Whatever you do. That's not where school is. <laughs> Hello, Red Dress. They have an autumn motif going in on the going around on the Enterprise right now. I didn't go. <laughs> Where babies come from. I wonder what, how the rest of that conversation went. What is he wearing under that uniform? Look at his, like, what? 
Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Bad touch. Bad touch. War's gonna get zapped again. Oh no. Um, not a, not a medical emergency. Well, not not, not a med. Well, well, I mean, don't attempt CPR or anything. I mean, he wasn't there that long. Man, if only our guy was on duty, but... I mean, nobody else was in there except for him and Worf for some reason. What is Worf's job, like, in the first season? Like, what does he do? What's he there for? He walks around the ship. He, We've seen him, like, on the bridge doing stuff in the back in engineering, riding the lift up and down. He's the Janus Rand of the 24th century. He he was in sensor um, rehabilitation, whatever that place was called. <laughs> Sens sensor rehabilitation, yes. <laughs> maintenance, sensor <laughs> maintenance. Lateral array still got the shakes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have chairs on uh, the Antican planet. They have like those cat things. They should totally have a big pole covered in carpet in the room. Can you eat for 11 hours? I mean, if it's a large meal and a very interesting animal. <laughs> I get it. I don't remember not remembering. Hypnosis? <sighs> All right, reason two, I hate the first season. <sighs> so, how was your day? I mean... Uh. Hmm. That, that doesn't. That, that wasn't a map or anything. That was just. You know, the Enterprise, the original Enterprise in Star Trek Two, had no smoking signs on the bridge. And if you watch, um, I think you can see them in the Blu-ray. But I watched one of the, I went to one of the cinematic replays last year or the year before. Yeah. And they were like very clear in a theater. Wonder if Data's smoking like synth tobacco. He's not really smoking, he's vaping. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want a vape that looks like a pipe now. By the way, internet, I don't vape. I'm not into that. Just don't get the idea. She's really insecure about her suddenly smaller bust in this episode. If you notice that, every scene, she's got her arms crossed and she's hunched over.
she will never hypnotize anybody ever again when they have missing <laughs> memories. It's probably really easy to hypnotize somebody if you're empathic. By the way, you can get the E-Pipe Camry K1000 Plus wood color for $46 with free shipping. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. Well, that's neat. Hmm. <laughs> that's the, that sounds like bullshit face. Did he just say, I'd ask? Yep. Contraction count one. Weave. There's two. Two. Mm. Mm. Riker's like, what the hell? They were all born yesterday. <laughs> Crap, a result. Oh no. Just like a human. Yep. Uh, we still don't have helm control. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't need it. Why would we want to go somewhere anyway? I like it here. You're right. What, nine? Two, five, mark three. Nine two five, yeah. Working nine two five. I have a problem with that heading. There's only three hundred and sixty degrees in a circle. <laughs> They're in a sphere. So turn the ship around twice, and then I guess that does end up backwards. You know, mostly because that would be what nine twenty five <laughs> minus seven twenty is. We're going to miss the show. Only. Yes. I'm not acting weird at all. What the hell? I'm the captain. Mm. 
Is that O'Brien? It is. He, he's in a yellow uniform now. Yeah, he's security now instead of whatever. He was like the helm guy. He was. What is that geode on his desk? Her desk. Where are they? Hey, it's the Galileo. Yeah. Then we're screwed. I mean, it's not like the same thing happened to two people that you know so far. I mean... And Singh's dead. <laughs> Come to think of it, is he the first guy who's died on this in the series so far? I think he is, yeah. Q didn't kill anybody. Neither did the Ferengi. Yeah, he's the first person on the ship, yeah. Because the uh, some of the bandy died in the pilot, but yeah, Singh is the first one. There's the whole Siokowski crew, but, you know. And the ship. I'm busy right now. Looking out the looking out the window. Yep. Doing captain stuff. Making toast. Talk to her. Or stupid. Uh, it got taken over by an entity and then it got transmitted to you somehow. <laughs> Making toast. I'll get O'Brien right up here. Got to look out this window some more. 25, 26, 27. Stars are going by too fast. 35, 37. Lethal. That's why I'm dead now. Wait. This is such a good book. Ah, uh, laptop. Who directed this episode? Uh, there's only some way to find out. Let's see here. Cliff Bowl. Or Bole or um, Bull. Bull. I feel like I've seen that name before. It's like every female character just looks so uncomfortable all the time. I 
Oh, now he's speaking with reverb now. He must be a uh, Sele. Or an Antican. Which one? I can't remember who's which. The Sele, I think, are the lizards. Oh, that is a straight up like Korg synthesizer tone there. If only any of us had some balls and could do something about it. But nah. Even though he's kind of admitted that he's under alien control. Yep. There's only some way to like force field him into his ready room. If only they had some kind of weapon. He's a little bit blurry. I can hear people moving stuff on the set. Now that you've said that, that's all I can hear. Mm -hmm. It's actually a pretty long shot. Good job, Patrick Stewart, pulling this, this whole uncut shot off. Still can't believe his name actually was Sing. You called that one, man. I don't believe I've ever heard this much background noise. Yeah, I really kind of wonder if this guy directed any more episodes. I've heard the name before, but... Slower than light. I'm going to dive right through the screen. Good job, Doctor. I like how Data grabbed the console. Yeah. Oh, um. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jordy's like, now you know how it feels. <laughs> yeah, like this is every second of every day for me, yeah. So Hold the captain, hold the lettuce. Beaming into space won't upset us. Gee, they have a beam energy only into space button? Why would they have that button? Well, now it's useful. I guess. Like, that seems like a terrible thing. Like, there wasn't even, like, a are you sure prompt. It was just, you know, nope, beam into space in three seconds. Maybe scan for bodies? Well, no, that's right, energy only. 
I mean, you know, the sensors are under maintenance. True. They sent Jordy and Worf to fix it. I mean... I'm useful again. My boobs have filled up my shirt again. Into the cloud, genius. I mean, he is blind, man. True. Go easy on him. Closer. You ever notice whenever Riker has to save Picard, it's through some ridiculous, insane plan? P. No. He really has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he doesn't have a bladder as an energy cloud. If not, does that mean they'll just like beam a body without his energy? Yeah, he'll just he'll just materialize and immediately die. Data doesn't feel emotions, by the way. <laughs> Don't tell him. But... Uh, Har, har, har. He's crabby. Because the character is impatient and crabby. Like any good diplomat. There's your moment. Uh, don't, don't worry about that possible, you know. Yeah, I mean, cannibalism. the ship's captain shouldn't, you know, bother himself with murder on his ship. It's fine. Everybody everybody lived happily ever after, except for that delegate and except Singh. for the one reptile dude and and Singh, yeah. 
Well, there we are. Um, yeah, that's what I remember about the episode is like they ate somebody and then just kind of left it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those silly aliens always eating people and killing people in the hallways. And, you know, their lives don't matter because they're aliens. Am I right? What, what about seeing? I can't think of a joke that's acceptable. I mean, Wesley seemed to be getting along with him. And then like the next time is like, he's dead. And Wesley didn't seem that all beat up about him. By this point, they should really be wary of anybody that is nice to Wesley. I mean, think about it. Episode two, the engineer who like almost got them destroyed. Well, they fired her. True. And the other guy, the Japanese guy. Episode three. Was he in episode three? I think he was not there. About that one. Let, yeah. Yeah. Episode four. Uh, wasn't in it. No, no. Wasn't it the, the traveler? No, that was five. It was episode four. Was the Ferengi? Oh, yeah. He yeah. He where's Wesley? Oh, he's freezing to death in our quarters. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> episode five. You know the guy who you know shot him across the universe three times and made people's brains make reality happen. And if they had any sense, they wouldn't let him talk to people anymore. But they don't clearly. All, the rest of his friends will be fine. He'll never have any more problems. <sighs> well, final thoughts? Lonely Among Us. It's such a nondescript title. It has. I don't really feel like that has anything to do with... I guess the energy thing, but you get like... It never really said it was lonely. Yeah. There's that one speech where he just walks around the bridge talking. And that's the only hint you get that they're lonely. See, a better written episode would have like, you know, they, they would have like a whole big thing. They'd have a subplot that kind of alludes to loneliness. And, you know, Data would be researching, you know, literature about like, like, like Data would be studying Emily Dickinson or something. I really feel like the better title would be Hungry Among Us. That's true, actually. But no, I mean, we could rewrite this episode. Okay, so so instead of studying Sherlock Holmes, Data is studying Emily Dickinson, right? She was a loner. She spent, like, most of her life alone in her room, like, sending letters out to people and never talking to anybody. Instead of going to see Parliament, they could go see, like, you know, the Beatles singing Eleanor Rigby. Yeah, or they could go see, like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> I don't know why that took so long to sink in. But... <laughs> <laughs> or, or they could go see like, you know, some some lonely singer songwriter, you know, they could be like, it could be like, I don't know, planet, I don't know, planet, help me out here. Like some, you know, single person who writes love songs. Um, I don't know. There's a million of them, but, you know, it could be it, it, it could have been that they are going to see Bill Withers. Yeah, cause Bill Withers, or, or, you know... Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Exactly, exactly. Or it could have been, um... Could even been, like, Alanis Morissette. Like, you know, <laughs> Planet Alanis Morissette. Something. And then, you know, like, they could have they could have done a C-plot with, like, you know, maybe Troy is feeling lonely now that she's, you know, she and Riker are single, and, like, they, they've been separated from each other, but now they have to face it. And they're having to face that. Maybe like they do a little thing with her and Riker independently, sort of reminiscing, and you wonder if they're going to get together. I mean, and like Dr. Crusher, because, you know... Like... Yeah, Crusher, because her husband died. You know, Wesley is 15 and doesn't have a girlfriend. You know, like, Date is the only one of his kind. Picard never had a family. Picard never had a family. Worf's entire culture. Jordy's blind, you know. And can't get a date. They could. Yeah, they could have done, like, Everybody in the crew, they could have developed these characters and like on that motif of loneliness and they could have all resolved I just, it. Something just like, I just realized something. What's that? Literally everybody in the crew is like really. Everybody in the crew should be like really depressed. Like, yeah, maybe that maybe that's why they're like kind of a shitty crew right now is that like they're all just working through some shit. And, you know, they're, they're not feeling confident. And that would explain the body language. You know, Troy's got her arms crossed. She's hiding her chest, which is what women do when they feel insecure. I'm sorry to keep focusing on that, but it's a good piece of body language. You know, doctor, she, was, she wasn't she was sure of her own decisions. 
you know, like, and like, and, and the people who were insecure, like, you know, the doctor and Jordy and Riker and Troy, they're the ones who met to discuss their decision and they couldn't decide it because they weren't sure of themselves. But all of that happened by accident. And you can tell that neither the writers nor the director intended any of it. And yet they titled the episode something that would have worked with all of that, but they didn't use it. I hate the first season of Next Generation. Fuck them. Fuck this show. It'll get better. I promise. <laughs> <sighs> I feel better. Also, something just occurred to me. What's that? Literally, I mean, this doesn't... Okay, let's take out Dr. Crusher for this. Uh-huh. But, like, Dr. Crusher and Jordy are the only ones who have not, lo- like, lost their parents. At, or at least one parent. That's true. I mean, you know, Picard's mother, we know she died. We know Riker lost his mom when he was really young. Worf lost both his parents. Yeah. Counselor Troy lost her dad. Yeah. Wesley lost his dad. Yar lost everything. Yeah. How is how is Yar the most well adjusted person, by the way? Well She's really not. She's not, you're right. I mean and Crusher, you know, Dr. Crusher, she lost her husband. Yeah. And Jordy is, you know, the only thing he is he's blind and he can't get a yeah. girlfriend. <laughs> Which I mean, I mean data too, I mean But but he yeah. doesn't care because he doesn't feel emotions. Clearly. Yeah, but Yeah. So they all have reasons to be lonely, is what you're saying. And uh, I look at all the lonely people. <laughs> But we don't look at them. We look at some aliens and an energy cloud and some lightning and, and it just... Oh, man. I feel, I, I feel really depressed now. I know, right? Hmm. Maybe that's why this episode's called Holy Among Us. Maybe because you come away from it thinking, you know, they should, they, they should have done better. Which doesn't fit. But it leaves you empty inside. It leaves you feeling like you've been taken from your own energy cloud. Yeah into these cold, unforgiving, unfeeling circuits of just, you know, you're just a cog in the machine, man. Or the guy who has to sit in sensor maintenance and look at a console. And get electrocuted. <laughs> by the blue lightning. Maybe it was P for Palpatine. Yeah. Cannibalism is just okay. Cannibals are all right with me. Can't, no, that's not that, part that's of that's, not, that's, that's the That's the Doobie Brothers. Yeah, and I mean, we are we are not um, endorsing cannibalism. No, or that e pipe that actually looks like a pipe. I mean, if you're gonna vape, do it in style, but don't vape. Yeah. All right, Star Trek: The Next Generation. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't vape either. Um, join us next time for episode seven, which is the uh, the, the sexy Dutch planet. I guess they see so that planet reminds me of Amsterdam, the Edo planet. I've never been to Amsterdam, but it makes me think of, you know, what I imagine Dutch people are actually like. All right. Good night, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. I don't know why this happens to me.